Good evening. So my name is Ronit and I am a hotelier. Well, it's a pleasure to come to the Dubai Peace International Conference. So my question is, like, I'm not being negative or like I'm not saying anything against over this. So, but my question is, like, when we talk about this topic, religion of, of peace. So why are we particularly talking about this religion? Like, why are we only particularly talking about Islam? Is it the only religion which is of which is of peace? There's another religions as well. Thank you very much, my brother. The question, as I've understood it, is that we're talking about Islam, the religion of peace. This is the peace convention. And obviously, it's an event that has invited to it so many people of all different diverse faiths. But it is promoting Islam in the sense that it's an event where the truth of Islam is being beamed. And the peace that stands within Islam is being beamed. And the truth is, like we've said, and I did declare in my talk, that true peace is achieved by worshipping the one who made you alone, without any deities together with that. So the one who made you, that is how you will achieve true peace. Others may call towards peace. The difficulty we have is people have categorized peace. And when they say we promote peace, they only talking of one type of peace, maybe if we don't have a war, people might say we have peace, but there is no internal peace. And so Islam is the only faith that goes into every single detail of my life and yours and governs how exactly it should be led in a way that I would be able to achieve inner and outer peace, peace within myself. In fact, the condition of my heart needs to be rectified in such a beautiful way. That's a whole topic on its own and the entire condition I am at peace with my own limbs and with the entire creation around me and on top of that I promote that peace that we're talking about when it comes to the opposite of war so my brother holistically yes Islam is the faith that promotes holistic peace and in my opinion and that of those it is the only faith that has in it every speck of detail regarding how to achieve that particular peace hence we call it the religion of peace. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, Quran Weekly. In the 82nd ayah of Surah Al An'am, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us something Ibrahim alayhi salam said to the people Fa'ayyul fariqayni ahaqqu bil amni in kuntum ta'lamun in the previous ayah. Which of the two groups do you think deserves peace more? Internal peace more? And so this ayah is about people who attain peace in their life. You know, people suffer from all kinds of emotional imbalances, depression, sadness. Uh, anger, anxiety, you know, how do you attain peace? And is there a relationship between faith and peace, internal peace, even emotional, psychological states of peace? Allah says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبَسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ Those who truly came to believe and did not disguise their truth or their, their faith with wrongdoing. In other words, wrongdoing is a disturbance in your, not just on the outside. When you do dhulm, you're disturbing something on the outside or someone on the outside. But in this ayah, beautifully, it is as though Allah is describing that when you do wrong to someone else, you've actually disturbed something inside of you. And then Allah says, if you're able to not do that and not wrong others and not do wrong, you know, not do injustice of any kind, أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ amn. Those are the people that deserve peace. They'll have peace. They'll have peace inside of themselves. SubhanAllah. You know how many times we see nowadays that soldiers that come from war that have witnessed atrocities or in settings where there were no oversight committed atrocities or were silent witnesses to atrocities that their brethren committed in, you know, during wars, they come back and commit suicide or they have nightmares or they're not able to have relationships or they can't go to sleep or they're all on kinds of medications, you know, PTSD and you name it. Not just from physical trauma. Physical trauma is something else, but just from the emotional trauma of what they've experienced or what they may have even had to do or they did and got away with. Well, they, they got away with it in the, in, sen in the sense of the authorities and the government and all of that, but their insides have been damaged. They don't have any peace anymore and they can't live with that. There are people who commit any, any and all kinds of crimes, not just against other human beings, but people like, you know, for example, nowadays, subhanAllah, there are people that are in the entertainment industry, they're in the music industry, they're, you know, and maybe they're not even the top celebrities, but people that are, that are in a particular kind of industry that has to do with just sinning and just wrongdoing. You know, they're in the clubbing industry, they're in this, they're one of these dirty industries. These people have to literally stay on drugs to be at peace because they're just, 
they're terrible to themselves and others when they're not in that state. They have to literally numb themselves away from reality to be able to cope, just to be able to cope, just to be able to deal, subhanAllah. Allah says people who were truly have found faith, they found something they could not find in a club, they could not find it at a party, they could not find it in a drug, they couldn't find it in alcohol, they couldn't find that peace anywhere. You know, and for those of you that aren't into these terrible things, maybe you're just into entertainment. You're just watching movie after movie after movie after movie after movie. And it's just messing you up on the inside. It's just tearing you apart. And the only thing you can do is fill that empty space with more entertainment and more entertainment and more entertainment. It just doesn't stop. And one day you just decide, and alhamdulillah Ramadan has come, so you decide to cut it, right? At least cut it down. Hopefully you cut it all together in this month. And then you go to the masjid and you feel this peace. And you haven't felt it in a long time. So you can tell the difference between the toxic waste you've been putting inside of you, spiritual toxic waste, and now this cleansing, just the listening to the Qur'an, just putting your head on the ground with everybody else. Just those few minutes even, what that does to you. You know, at the beginning, when, you're, when you've been eating terrible food for a long time, healthy food tastes bad. So in the beginning, when people come after a long time to a masjid, they're like, I gotta get out of here quick. Is there a moving plane nearby? Can I do, do that instead? You see a lot of people, young people especially, want to hang out outside the masjid. You know, they're, and they're all on their devices. Nobody's at peace. Nobody's just sitting calmly. You know, this is what Iman does. It gives you calm. It gives you peace. You're not jittery. You're not disturbed. You're not just constantly in the need for some other fix. You know, whether, whether for your eyes or for your, you know, for your brain, for your tongue, you know, for your, for your limbs. You're not looking for that fix. You're just at rest, subhanAllah. And they're the ones that are committed to guidance. In other words, Allah is saying that this without commitment, you're not, you're, it's only going to come and it's going to go. You're going to have to show some commitment to be able to hold on to that peace. Allah Azza wa Jal, in another place in the Quran, He says, You should know that by remembering Allah, hearts become calm, they become tranquil, they become at ease. And that's what this ayah is about. Wallahi, the world, every human being on this world, on this earth, is looking for peace. They're looking for tranquility inside of them. Something is bothering them and they just say to themselves, you know, you tell yourself, if I just had that, I'd be happy. And they put it in different words, I mean, being happy. If I just had this, if I had this much money, I'd be happy. If I got this girl, I'd be happy. If I had this car, I'd be happy. If I had this house, I'd be happy. If I lived here, I'd be happy. If I bought that device, if I had that video game, if I did this, if I did that. We always set these goals and say, I would be happy. And guess what? The ones you set for yourselves before and you said, you'll get there and you'll be happy. How long did it last? And then you moved on to something else that you, you couldn't find satisfaction in. This is the ayah that Allah Azza wa Jal teaches us. It, through the words of Ibrahim Ali, some timeless words, right? If it was true back in the day, it's still true today. SubhanAllah. The people who can truly find faith and they don't replace their faith with wrongdoing. So even if you're Muslim, doesn't mean you have peace. Maybe you're replacing your faith with wrongdoing. You need to stop doing the wrong, cut that out of your life, and Allah will grant you the gift of peace. May Allah make us all the people of peace, and may Allah all make us all among al muhtadin Barakallahu li wa lakum, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, our Shaykh today is reciting Surah Al-Ma'idah. And Surah Al-Ma'idah is the last of the major surahs to be revealed in the Qur'an. It was the very final revelation uh, of, in terms of the major surahs uh, in the Qur'an. And Surah Al-Ma'idah came down around the time of the Hajj of the Prophet wasallam, And in it is that very famous verse, uh, that verse that uh, a Jewish person came to Umar ibn al-Khattab and he said that, O oh commander, O oh my leader, because he was also the leader of the Jews and Christians, O oh, oh our leader, if this verse had been revealed to us, we would have taken that day as a day of Eid, as a day of celebration. Every year we would have celebrated that day. This verse is what? Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islama deena. What is this verse that is so important that this non-Muslim said that if our religion had this verse, we would have been celebrating every year the annual celebration when this verse came down. It means, Al-Yawma today, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Today, I have completed your religion for you. The deen is kamil. Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati. 
and I have perfected my favors and my blessings upon you. Some people, they mistranslate this verse that I have completed my favors. No, Allah's favors are never complete. We always need Allah's favors. Allah's ni'mah, we would not be alive today if Allah hadn't given us ni'mah, right? Atmamtu means I have perfected, reached the pinnacle. Atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam adina and I have chosen for you and I am pleased for you Islam to be your way of life. Life. This verse is so comprehensive, it gives us so many blessings and points. And the entire surah revolves around this verse. This verse is the, if you like, fundamental axis of the whole surah. That is because the surah came to finalize the religion of Islam. The final laws were revealed in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Ibn Abbas said, no sharia, ah, no law came down after Ma'idah. After Ma'idah, we just have a few verses here and there that basically complete the Quran, but the final legislation was Surah Al-Ma'idah. And Surah Al-Ma'idah talks about many different aspects of legislation, one of the main themes as well is the issue of food and clothing. Surah the Ma'idah discusses this because this is of the finer details of the Sharia. Uh, the Salah has been revealed, the Zakah has been revealed, the Hajj has been revealed. So Allah Azza wa Jal finishes up with the final things. And Allah basically says, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Today your deen is kamil. One of the most important points we derive from this brothers and sisters. And it is very important in light of the world that we live in. The world that teaches us that we should always change. We should always have newer versions. Version 1, version 2, version 3. The world that has told us that the other religions have evolved. Why don't you revolve? Allah says, this religion of yours is kamil. This religion of yours is perfect. And there is no need for it to evolve. The fundamentals of our religion, brothers and sisters, will not change, no matter what the world tells us. Our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the broad basics of our ethics, our morality, our laws, these are unchangeable. Why? Change means that the previous product was not perfect, right? Let me give an example of Windows. We all know the problems with Windows and the bugs with Windows and all of the updates, right? Every Windows update has its bugs and flaws. So what happens? Windows version 1, version 2, version 3, version 4. Many of us, including myself, remember when Windows first came out. We're still, we remember that, right? Now which version are we on? We've lost count. Why? Because every product is an update, is better, fi fi fixes the problems of the previous product. Well, imagine if they had released a Windows that was flawless. Imagine if there was a Windows that didn't have any virus problem or any patches needed, they would not need to update. Now, humans cannot produce a perfect product. So for humans, they always need to update because we are not perfect. Allah Azza wa Jal has told us that Al Yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum. Today, that's the day of Hajj, on the day of Arafah, in the tenth year of the Hijrah. All of the laws have now been sealed. Khalas, end. There is no need for change. There is no need for, for, for fine-tuning. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي My favors have been now perfected. I have given you the Sharia. Ah. I have given you political power. The Prophet ﷺ is now in Mecca as the leader of Mecca. All of the fears that you had are now gone. You came and you were persecuted. Now I have perfected my favors that you have the entire Arabian Peninsula in your right hand. You are now the undisputed leader. You also have followers that will do anything for you. You have attained the perfection. And Allah is saying, today has that perfection been reached and I have chosen Islam as your way of life. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ And the meaning of deen, we've heard this a lot of times, that deen is not just a religion, it's a way of life. In fact, this is very true. The meaning of dana yadinu, the meaning of dana is to submit to. This is the meaning of the verb dan from which deen comes from, right? The meaning of dana is to submit. And therefore, the deen is that which you submit to. It's your code that you live by. It is your laws, your ethics, your values, your morals. Every human being has a deen. Every human being. Even atheists have a deen. 
It's their code that they live by. Every person has some type of philosophy, some type of ruling they're going to use. For us, we thank Allah. Allah has given us that way of life. Allah has told us what is right from what is wrong. And that is why in this surah, there are so many laws regarding our sharia. Ah. In this surah, Allah says, our Imam recited in the last rak'ah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِي الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبُ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكَ كَثْرَةُ الْخَبِيثُ Announce to mankind that the khabith and the tayyib, the pure and the filthy, are never going to be equal. Even if you are shocked at how much filth exists in the world. This is a verse, brothers and sisters, especially in light of what is happening today. When alternative lifestyles are being promoted, when filth is being told that it is permissible, when the haram is being made halal, when if you speak out and say, look, this is immoral, this is disgusting, this is filthy, you are said to be the bigot and the racist and this and that. Allah says in the Quran, even if the filth overwhelms you, walaw a'jabaka kathratul khabith, it's not going to make the filth become pure. This is a fundamental reality of our religion that Allah Azza wa Jal has laid out in stone. And Allah Azza wa Jal clarifies it. Another example, again, this whole surah is about fine tuning and perfecting the laws. And therefore, in this surah, Allah Azza wa Jal also has revealed the final prohibitions of so many things. For example, Allah says in the Quran, this surah right now we just recited it in the second rak'ah. إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْإِزْلَامُ رِجِسٌ مِّنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ that drinking alcohol, khamr, and maysir, gambling, and ansab and islam, which means the idols, and uh, there's a way that they would worship the idols. This is basically uh, to do with the shirk. Allah says, gambling and, and drinking alcohol are from the filth of shaitan. رِجِسٌ مِنْ عَمَلِ shaitan. So avoid it so that you can be successful. Then Allah clarifies. Why? And through this clarification, brothers and sisters, we learn why has Allah revealed the Sharia to us. Inna yuridu shaytanu. The reason why shaytan is calling you to drink, the reason why shaytan is calling you to gamble. Inna yuridu shaytanu an yuqabainakum al adawa tu al bagta. Shaytan wants you to start fighting with one another, to break up, to have problems. The root of all evil is alcohol and drugs. Look, my brothers and sisters, the number one cause for gangs in this country, the number one cause for death is alcohol related. The number one cause for people doing what they do, crimes and all of this is because of what? It is khamr and it is alcohol. And Allah says that, Allah, that shaitan wants to cause problems between you. He wants to ruin your relationship with one another. He wants to spread evil on this earth. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانَ أَنْ يُوقَعْ بَيْنَكُ عَدَاوَةُ وَالْبَغْضَاءُ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ وَيَصُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَعَنِ الصَّلَاةِ And he wants you to turn away from remembering Allah and from prayer. So, gambling, drinking, drugs have two problems. Number one, a worldly problem. Number two, a spiritual problem. Similarly, brothers and sisters, everything that Allah has made haram, He has made it haram, not because He enjoys making our life difficult, but because the haram is harmful for us. It is harmful for our souls. It is harmful for society. Allah has made things haram as a mercy for us and not in order to make life difficult upon us. Allah is saying that alcohol, drugs, these gambling, shaitan is using it to cause fitna amongst you. Shaitan is using it to make you think of things that are not important and you turn away from that which is important and that is the prayer and dhikrullah. And therefore we learn from this brothers and sisters that the whole sharia is a sharia of mercy. Laws of this religion are meant to better humanity, not meant to make humanity worse. Even if everybody criticizes, why is, why is alcohol uh, bad? Why can't we just drink a little bit? Why is sexuality wrong? Why is homosexuality? Why this? Why that? We have our clear-cut principles. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Even if we don't understand, Allah knows you do not know. And by the way, I am saying we don't understand. But wallahi, brothers and sisters, every scientist, every social, every person who has an intelligence, if they look at the things that Allah has made haram, 
The human fitrah without any PhD in sociology. The human soul will say, that is disgusting. That is filthy. I don't want to do that. How many are the converts that I have met, my friends, that told me that when they were in pre-Islam, when they were in Jahiliyyah, some of them said that I never drank and I never touched a woman because I knew this was something that is not gentlemanly. It's not what a man does. And others said that I was doing it, but deep down inside, I knew something was wrong. This is not the way we should be living, just like animals. Yesterday, I saw uh, a YouTube video of, of one of our brothers who converted to Islam, and he was saying that I was just living a carefree life. I was drinking, womanizing, this and that, 18 years old. And he said, but it struck me, is this all there is to life? That's all I'm going to do, live like an animal? And I kept on researching until I saw the religion of Islam say you should not drink, you should not take drugs, you should not womanize. And I realized this is the law that my creator would tell me to do. This is a law that is pure. This is a law that tells us to be like humans and not animals. This is what non-Muslims are saying. And that is the first verse that our Shaykh recited today. The first verse he recited is when the non-Muslims who have a good heart, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ when they hear the Quran that has been revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, you will find them crying out of joy, out of happiness, that they know that this is the truth. Allah testifies in the Quran that anybody with a pure heart, when he hears this message of Islam, he knows it is the true message. And the primary way that we do this is by telling the truth, not by hiding, not by being embarrassed. Next time somebody says, what, your religion doesn't allow social drinking? Your religion doesn't allow this and that? We should be firm and frank. Yes, it does not. Because in this is harm. In this is physical harm. And in it is spiritual harm. A few days ago, our Shaykh recited the other verse in the Quran related to this. And that is that Allah Azza wa Jal says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants to make things easy. He doesn't want to make things difficult. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ Allah wants to make your burden light upon you. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا The problem is we have been created weak. Not that the sharia is difficult. Allah Azza wa Jal says, يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ يُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants to make things easy and not make things difficult. Allah says, وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ Allah says there is no difficulty that Allah has placed in this religion. The religion is not difficult, it is common sense. It is a logical religion, it is a rational religion, and every single ruling that Allah has revealed, we can understand the benefits. And for those that we don't understand, we will have to put our faith in Allah. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the pure is clear and the filth is clear. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to live as Muslims, to die as Muslims, and to be resurrected as Muslims. Wa akhru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.